Uh, I'm Nancy Phillips. I lived in this house for 11 years. The house is very historic. It's been here since the 1870s. It actually has a name. It's called Shelter Cove. I, I've always felt that there was some other presence in the house that went beyond just us living here. And so uh, sometimes uh, late at night, on the third floor, I would hear footsteps, uh, running, running footsteps. Regarding what's in my back garden, there have been many families and many experiences in this neighborhood. And in fact, the only murder that we know of was just a few doors down. Um, and the property had many mysteries to it and when we bought the place we were shown kind of a map of the back garden and there was a place that indicated that there was something underground so we ex excavated it all right wind up two three. Oh my god ah. okay yikes okay there we go <laughs> holy wow. shit Look at that. Don't oh, don't go any further. Awesome or what? Right, yeah. Now we need a ladder. <laughs> yeah. Do we have a, a ladder? <laughs> Julie's like the cool, Julie's like the coolest cool. chick in the world. Give me that. Yeah. Yeah. This is not you know an aqueduct where you're letting water in or anything like that. This is literally a cistern in the yep. ground. Okay. That is amazing. So you can only wonder what, you know, you use something like this for. Maybe to hide people. Um, there's a history of the Underground Railroad here in Nyack, the slaves um, uh, escaping during the Civil War came through here, and even after the war, um, escaping slaves came through Nyack. If you were going to hide somebody or something, this would be the perfect spot to do it. Yeah. Hello, is uh, anybody down here curious about what it is that we're doing here today? We just unearthed something that probably hasn't been opened in a very long time. I don't know if this is true. Did you hide here? Did anyone hide here? Please feel free to talk to us again. I'm Cody, this is Ken. We would love to have the opportunity just to have a, a few words with you, if you could spare the time. I'm not even sure if anybody is down here or even cares, but we know that a lot of things have happened on the property, so... Kind of trying to tie it all together. I'm actually getting uh, a higher spike when I go closer to the walls here. You're absolutely right, I am too. But this is the first time this has been uncovered in very, very long time and we were really amazed at what we saw down here. Um, did you just hear somebody walking? It did sound like that, didn't it? Is anybody up there walking around? Maybe um, when my time is done, uh, I'll come back to Shelter Cove. I'll stay here for centuries, for eternity. That's pretty much one of the coolest things I've ever seen.
We come with the utmost respect for you and this house and the people that live here. If we are making you nervous because you don't know who we are and the owners aren't around, um, if you're possibly in another room and you can hear me, could you make a noise just to say, hey, you know, where you are? Again, you won't scare us. And because obviously you're looking at a place in the mid-1700s that you moved into. And it was interesting to us because we found that the person who sold us the house had done a lot of research herself, including turning over a deed from a British major who supposedly purchased the house after the revolution. This was found by the former owner of the house. So this dates back to 1,789. That is, that's fascinating. This is the wall that when we moved in, the little dachshund dogs that you saw in the photo yeah. would sit and bark at. Looking at this wall, I'm not talking the first week. I'm not talking about the second week. I'm talking about 12 years of barking, of barking at, at that wall at the oddest time of day or evening. Prevailing theory is maybe they see or perceive things that we don't, so. Could be. Yes. The dog just jumped. The dog just jumped. It's the tail. They wagging their tail. Hugh Phillips, uh, I've lived in here since July uh, 2012. Uh, have I seen any paranormal experiences here? Yes. Uh, I have seen numerous uh, things out of the side of my eye. Uh, last week, I saw a woman dressed in white in my room, sitting on a bench. I saw a baby flying through the air. I was half asleep, so maybe it was, maybe it was a dream. I don't know exactly what it was, but... Um, I've seen many things like that, and nearly everyone who's stayed here has said that they've seen that. Uh, things like that, you know, unexplained noises, very strange noises, um, seeing some kinds of apparitions and things like that. It's, uh, so I, I don't know entirely what to make of that. Well, we're here at Straw Town Road. 
in West Nyack at the site of an old grist mill that was here. And we'd like to tell you the story of the last witch trial that was held in the state of New York and maybe in the entire country. It involves a woman named Jane Caniff. We have a lady who's not our blood in this town that's wearing colors and having weird haircuts. So to sum it all up, a witch trial takes witch place. Trials. And this is what the citizens in this area came up with. They took her to this mill that is just outside this building that we're in, and they had two very large scales. So they took a brass-bound Bible on one scale, and they placed Jane on the other end. If Jane did not weigh as much as the Bible, she was therefore a witch. They put the Bible down, and everybody gathered, and Jane stepped on the scale, and immediately the Bible, they, they described it, said it, it as like, cold. It went right through the roof. Went right through the roof to heaven, or something yeah. like that. Part of this that is really kind of disturbing is the idea that had they come up with something different yeah. for this woman, she would have been hung in 1816 that something like this still happened. But it was the last witch trial in the state of New York, right here, and we're at the site of it. And um, as I said, maybe even the entire country at that point. Who lived in here since the, the building of it in the um, 1700s? Yeah. There's gaps. It's the kind of place with its history and background that maybe there's something or somebody who just mm -hmm. decided they're going to hang around a little bit longer. We'll see. Uh, we look like, you know, like somebody yeah. standing here like this. I thought he was just standing out of the way so we could film him. That's strange. In the shadow blocking out the light of a, a guy. Blocking out the light coming through the window. He's like, is Ken over there? He goes, I hope so. I thought he was standing over there <laughs> letting us film. Get out of here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like the light's coming through the window, through the window. shining on the floor. And it, you'd see the silhouette of a guy standing there. And the uh, EMF level spiked at one point. Yeah. We were in an area that none of the wiring was... Yeah, nothing hooked, hooked, hooked up, 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 up there yet. Yeah. So, and it was fine, and then all of a sudden, it got a, a good rise. I don't really believe in ghosts, so I have to conclude that I'm kind of imagining things. But, you know, it's a weird place. There's not many places have witch trials and where not many places are 200 years old and not many places you see what you think are ghosts at the time of. So, you know, I don't know. But I, I don't believe in ghosts and I'm sticking to that. There's like... <laughs> what do you get? There's like a, a floating EMF field right here. And like if I go right here, right here, it's up, right here, it's down, right here, it's gone. Trace the wires. So there's this one. This one's definitely giving off something. But I lose it right here. And then it comes back right here. And actually now it's gone. I don't know what that was. I'm Bob Massiello. I live on 26 Madison Avenue, Garneville, New York. And I bought this house in 94 and realized that it goes back to the 18th century. And then after doing further research, I realized that it's three houses enveloped into one house. What drew me to this house was that it had some historical significance. And then as I was doing the research, I realized that it's Suffern's house. And Suffern sold it to his son, John I. Suffern, in 1791. I was attentive to the fact that, okay, there's some type of spirits that I'm sharing the house with. And obviously, obviously it was probably their house. I mean, this was around during the Revolutionary War. It was around during the Civil War. And I understand it was a military headquarters during the Civil War. So I do have some shackles in the basement that are, are handmade by a blacksmith that are pounded into the stone wall. So the story I heard was that the, the scouts that came, the Confederate soldiers that came up this far were imprisoned in the basement. So who knows if, who died here or on the property.
about 30 or 45 seconds ago, right? I think Cody, before you asked that last question, I thought I heard a female audible and they're pretty quiet upstairs. So I'm just maybe about a minute ago, just see if you, Where you heard anything. From over here? No, very distant, but it sounded like a, a female, like a higher pitched voice. So I did have a, a one tenant downstairs. Uh, she was my first tenant. She was living one day and she said to me, we can't live here any longer. She said, things are getting lost all the time or hidden. The blinds were actually moving. Uh, she told me that during the night, there was a figure standing in her doorway, all black came and her eyes were open and she immediately shut her eyes and she, would, she asked me the next day. And when she woke up, they were, it was gone. And then she had, uh, the toys were moving. And she said day after day, she, she would watch the toys move from one side of the room to the other. And she said she had enough. She's not gonna stay in the same house. So we lost those tenants. There's somebody in here right now that likes to check on the tenants and you wander between the two buildings. Hello to you. Do you want to come in and say something? Want to go yeah, it might be some outside, but I definitely heard that. One day, uh, there was an invitation from 1928 for a dinner dance. And, and the invitation was for, for me and my wife. But not with my names on it, it was someone else. And that just was on the floor. And I could show you that invitation. It was handwritten and it was on a dirt floor in the middle of the floor where I've been working and walking through so many times. And I don't know where it came from. It, it couldn't have fallen out of the floorboards. It just appeared on the floor one day. He so found uh, this in the basement. Good, that was probably when Good Goodman With like no real reason that it should be there. It's just right. nothing he'd ever seen before. Right, because he was working in the house. He lived here six months. He's going upstairs, downstairs, upstairs, downstairs. And all of a sudden in the middle of the basement, that just happened to thing? be there. here because the gentleman who owns the house, his name is Bob, he said that he feels that there may be someone here. The owner now, you know, claimed to us that someone had sat on the couch. Uh, you know, there were impressions, but no one was sitting there. If that person's here, we'd like to talk to you. Can you hear something? Mm-hmm. It was like a low, almost mm -hmm. like a low hum from an old radio. Yep. Yeah. I heard more than that thing, so... Okay, well, more. that's that's what I got out of it, but yeah, I, could, I think he's got someone in this room that might have been attached to the oldest part of the house yep. that we're in. Um, I mean, just looking at all the antiques in here, he might have brought something else in. Possibly. You know, that's uh, going into the tenant's part of the house. Once I got to this house, I asked the owner, the previous owner, you know, are there any ghosts in the house? And he turned and he smiled and he looked at me and he said, there's happy ghosts. My name is Carolyn Brewer. We live in Suffern, New York. We began to see lights and things twinkling, especially in this room and by the front door. Like we'd be sitting here and I would see lights shimmering. Now my husband is the biggest experiencer in the house. He's a hardcore skeptic. Even if you ask him now, he'll, he'll admit that he has seen and heard these things, but he'll say, I don't know that it's a ghost. It's just, I don't know what's happening. I have heard voices downstairs for the last, I don't know, five, 10 years. Basically, I was just coming down the flight of stairs. Uh, Carolyn was behind me and we were talking. And I saw what looked like one of the children pretty quickly run out of my room. And it kind of made sense because they're not supposed to be in my room by themselves or whatever. But, and then I came around the bottom of the stairs and I looked around the corner, nothing there. And all the kids and were, you were sleeping. Behind me and I was like, wow. Curious to see if they find anything. Um, 
but I have really no, no big expectations. Hmm. Mark out here just... I heard that. I don't know if that was upstairs. I'm not sure. Because it was kind of more of a singing part. Right? This is obviously a very historically significant place. Tell us a little bit about what went on under its roof here over the years. Yeah, we're really proud of this old tavern. It's uh, uh, the oldest tavern in America. This is probably the oldest uh, existing structure that has been publicly used. We uh, saw the first Declaration of Independence here, which is called the Orange Town Resolutions. Really? Uh, the execution of Major John Andre, a significant turning point in the War of Independence. He actually stayed in this room that we're actually sitting in. He freely admitted to being a spy, uh, eventually executed by hanging. And three years later, 1783, Washington meets with Sir Greg Carlton in our front dining room and receives the plans of the British evacuation and the recognition uh, by the English that America is free and independent of Great Britain. If anything is going to have something left over uh, that, that, you know, wants to touch the living from the other side. Right. It would yes. be here. We've had literally books written about table two. The place would be 85 degrees in the dining room and the woman would sit down and be like, I'm freezing. In the front room, we have very fragile glass lanterns and there's nothing to shake this building. So these little delicate candelabras would fall on the floor up front. We'd be having a waiter meeting over here and up front we'd hear chunk, 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 and like, you know, silverware falling on the floor, you go up there, the glass never broke, you put it back on the table, just reset the table, but it was like someone was playing with us. For years this went on. The little corner, table 11, constantly myself and the whole staff sees people sitting in the corner. We have like a joke that we make with people, that like if you're sitting in table 11 and you don't get good service, it's because we don't really think you're sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm We're going, so used to going over there. there. And it, uh, 
uh, we had a great wedding here. Uh, the bride and groom uh, uh, had a super time. It was such a great wedding that even the photographer stayed late. And a few days after the wedding, I get a call from the bride. And she's, she's very happy about the wedding, but clearly there's something that's bugging her. And I'm like, so what, what's, what's bugging you? I can hear like you're not like gushing like I thought you would. And she's like, well, I have this one picture and it's my favorite picture of all the bunch and it's like after the wedding and there's this big woman that's photobombing us in the picture and it, i'm kind of pissed because you know we had the whole restaurant to ourselves and this i don't know this person in this yellow dress sure. and and like why'd you let her in and i'm like does the person have a head and she looks closer at the picture and she starts screaming into the phone. She's like, oh my God, I love this picture now. I'm like, yeah, you got a picture of the ghost. For a different reason. Uh, exactly. Exactly. That's the first question right. is like, do they have a hand? I mean, it's such history here. And it's no wonder why you, you really do get these feelings and stories of, oh. sure, of you know, such a variety. It's got, it's got the vibe, that's for sure. Yes. Amazing energy.